Greetings, Nick Bocott with Sweetwater here, and today we're going to be looking at the Mesa Cab Clone IR Plus. <laughs> So what exactly is this handsome thing to my left anyway? Well, it's a reactive load box, it's also a digital cabinet simulator, and an impulse response reader loaded with 16 presets of some fine, fine, fine Mesa cabinets. And just so you know, you can easily download your own favorite IRs into this thing's memory, and then drag and drop them into one of the 16 presets that are readily available from the front panel. The Cab Clone IR Plus also happens to be an excellent speaker attenuator, which will allow you to tame your fire-breathing tube 100 watt head monster into something you can use in a small club, a small studio, or even in your bedroom and not upset the neighbors. Plus, due to its built-in reactive load, you don't have to attach a cabinet to it either. You can just take an old tube head, plug straight into the Cab Clone, crank that volume up to 11, and then play in the studio, or at home once again, and not upset anybody. To get a good handle on Messer's design MO for this piece, let's check in with one of the principal R&D guys involved. His name is John Marshall. And if that name rings a bell, it should do, because if you're a metal fan, you know who he is. Yep, he's the guy that played in Metal Church in the 80s, and he's such a darn good guitar player that when James Hetfield hurt himself in both 86 and 92, he played rhythm guitar for Metallica in stadiums all over the place. He also happens to be six foot seven, so don't mess with this dude. That said, John, take it away. At the core, Mesa Boogie is a tube amplifier company. The goal with the Cab Clone IR and the Cab Clone IR Plus is to allow you to use your tube amplifier without having to plug in a microphone and a speaker cabinet, but still give you access to all the great Mesa Boogie speaker cabinets. And just for good measure, here's a few words on the same subject from another R&D maven over at Mesa, Doug West. So as digital recording technology races forward, there's still something magical about the analog tube guitar amp. It has a tone, an inspiring feel, and basically a signal response that nothing else can capture. That includes the cabinetry, and here at Mesa, we're deep into our cabinets, as you probably know. Microphones are another important part of that signal chain, and so we wanted to use the best possible. So basically, our goal with the Cab Clone was to allow you to access all three of those things and come up with a system to plug directly into your interface or console and capture all of that magic and inspiration without the setup time and hassle normally associated with all those pieces. Before we go through the Cab Clone's core cool features, let's check it out very quickly. And I'm going to do so by using the attenuator to tame the fire breather behind me, a JCM 800 Marshall 2203, an all-tube 100 water that literally owned the 80s and is still dominant very much today in metal and hard rock. And as you can see, I've got it plugged into a tall Mesa regular 4x12 cabinet loaded with vintage 30s. Now, even though the JCM 800 has a master volume and a gain control, which means you can get a lot of crunch at low volumes, to get that synonymous punch in the chest from it that everyone loves, you've got to crank that master volume and get those EL34 power tubes cooking. To illustrate that, I'm going to crank the gain up, but have the volume relatively low. In fact, low enough that most sound men in most venues would go, yeah, leave it right there, don't turn it up anymore. And that's not what we want. Here's what it sounds like. <laughs> Now that didn't suck by any means. It had some crunch, but it didn't have the girth I was looking for. But at that volume, a lot of sound men would have already said, turn that thing down. So let's kick in the cab clone and its speaker attenuator and see what we can get out of it. <laughs> That's more like it. In fact, that wasn't as loud as the previous setting. And believe it or not, the first setting, the volume was at nine o'clock. Second time round, it was about two o'clock, which is where it should be to get those power tubes cooking. And that's the beauty of this thing right there. It does it very well. It feels right and it sounds right. What a concept. As you can see, the attenuator has a five-way switch on itself. Zero dBs, 
which is absolutely no attenuation, no cut whatsoever. Then minus 4 dBs, minus 8 dBs, minus 12 dBs, and minus 16 dBs. But as you can see here, there's another control here. When I've got it all the way clockwise, it's on minus 16 dBs. And then as I rotate it anti-clockwise, it gets lower and lower and lower, all the way down to minus infinity, which, yep, you've guessed it, is zero. None more sound, nothing whatsoever. So you literally can tame the beast even to bedroom levels. Hopefully it goes without saying that when you attenuate an amp to that degree, you're going to lose some speaker breakup. But that's when the IRs within the cab clone come into their own. So what I can do is this. I can mic up that cabinet like we've just done and then blend in an IR of a cabinet of my own choice. And I'm going to blend in the same exact cabinet that's behind me, the standard tall Recto 4x12. So let's check it out. <laughs> Sorry about that, got carried away. That's how good it sounds and feels. It made me want to play, albeit badly. Another cool thing about the cab IR is this. I can mix and match cabinets. So I'm going to stick with 4x12 behind me because that's all I've got here. And I'm going to go to a 1x12 on this bad boy and blend them together and see what happens. We'll do more of this in a minute. <laughs> That was a pretty interesting cabinet mix, I'm sure you agree. A 1x12 with a 4x12. And thanks to the memory on the cab clone, the possibilities are endless. Now, whenever units like the cab clone are discussed, invariably terms such as reactive load and inductive load come up. They're thrown around liberally, but what do they mean? Does anybody know? To be honest, I'm not really sure. So let's find out from an expert. And to do that, I'm going to turn the question over to Messrs. Doug West. He's their R&D maestro. He's been around forever. He's Randall Smith's right-hand man, and he's affectionately known by many as Tone Boy. So, Doug, pray tell me what on earth this term means. So there's a lot of talk about reactive loads these days, and what that basically means is the load itself imparts a frequency response, a tone, and a feel onto your tube amplifier. And basically, we chose that type of load for the cab clones because it gives you more inspiring vibe and, and, and juice to get into it, right? So when you're going in this digital recording domain and everything's sterile and perfect and direct, it's just going to give you more of a realistic sound and feel. And just for good measure and because he's six foot seven as well, here's a few words on the same subject from Mr. Marshall. Okay, reactive load. Here's the deal. With a tube guitar amplifier, you always need to have a load plugged into your speaker output when you're using the amp. Otherwise, you might cause some damage. In general, there's a couple different ways you can do that. You can do it with a big load resistor, or you can do it with a reactive load. The benefits of a reactive load are that it provides the same tone, feel, and frequency response that a speaker in a cabinet does, which allows you to use your cab clone IR without having the speaker plugged in but still get that same feel and tone that you would with a speaker. Cool info, so now me and the know. Now let's take a quick look at some of the features on the Cab Clone IR Plus. And we're gonna start with the front panel. First control is the input, which controls, wait for it, the input. And we have these LEDs here. Green means okay, yellow means very good, red means no, clipping, danger. So green, okay, orange or yellow, good, red, bad. Next up, we have a presence control. In the middle, it's neutral. Then you turn it clockwise to give you more cut, anti-clockwise to attenuate or reduce the highs. Then we have an output for the DI out. Then we have the all important cab IR selector here. We've got a bank switch. Right now it's on A, which is green. We switch it down, it's red. 
Green is the live emulation. Red are the studio captures, if you will. And each one has eight thereof. The only other two controls we need to look at are here we have the attenuator. 0 dBs, which is no attenuation, then minus 4, minus 8, minus 12, and 16. And also we have this control here, when it's all the way that way, it's minus 16, but as we turn it counterclockwise, we go all the way to minus infinity, which is nothing, nada, zero. And last but no means least, we need to look at this switch here. When you've got a speaker attached such as this, it has to be up, but when I detach the speaker thus, this is just the input from the amp, then I switch it to load. There almost always must be a load there, so if you're not using a speaker, make sure this switch is down. And there's an LED he here that tells you if there's nothing plugged into there, there's danger if you want to switch to load. And for good measure, let's take a quick look at the rear panel as well. It's basically the usual suspects, but there's a few interesting things, like some MIDI and USB, so let's check it out. So we have two inputs, a line input for, say, a preamp, and also the input for the speaker out from your amplifier. And then there's an output if you're using a cabinet. And if you're not using a cabinet, remember, switch the switch on the front to load. We've got a MIDI in and a MIDI through if you're going to be using MIDI switching for the IRs. We've got a USB port there so you can attach your computer and bring in whatever IRs you desire. Input for the power supply, phase switch, ground lift, XLR DI output, headphone output, and a dry line out. None more simple. The 16 preset IRs within the cab clone are divided into two banks of eight. There's a green bank, which is the live setting IRs, and there's also the red bank, which are the studio captures. Different mics, same cabinets. The cabinets include a standard rectifier 4x12, a regular Recto 4x12, a horizontal Recto 2x12, a Recto 1x12, two Lone Star cabinets, one 2x12, one 1x12, and also a California Tweed, which is also a 1x12. And as already mentioned, if you want to use your own IRs, just plug in your USB, download the suckers, then drag and drop them into one of the preset zones, and you're set and ready to rock. Personally speaking, one of the things I really like about the Cab Clone is not just how natural it sounds and feels, but the tonal variety it gives you. It's like a tonal crayon for the studio. So I can just go in with my head, plug into this, and then just by changing the cabinets using the presets, I can get a bunch of different sounds without changing guitars or even changing settings on the amp. And to illustrate that, I'm going to change guitars, play something shamelessly stolen, or should I say influenced by Led Zeppelin, and use three separate cabinets with the same setting. But first, we've got to change the amp from a JCM 800 to probably the most famous Marshall of all, a Super Lead 100 Watt Plexi. Yes! What we're going to do is this. I'm going to unplug the cabinet. I'm going to switch this to load. And we're just going to record three tracks using three different IRs. We're going to start with the IR, which is the live version of the cabinet behind me, the standard tall Recto 4x12. Here goes. <laughs> Right, one down, two to go. And all I'm gonna do is change the IR. I'm not gonna change the guitar or anything on the amp whatsoever. I'll just continue to play badly as they're set up. So our second IR will be red number six, which is a two by 12 Lone Star loaded with C90 Celestian speakers. Let's do the switch, then have at it. <laughs> And last, but certainly not least, track number three. And for that, we're going to switch to Red Bank number eight, which is a Californian Tweed 1x12 loaded with a Jensen Blackbird speaker. So let's do the switch. I am going to make one small change on my guitar, though. I'm going to switch to the middle position. And if you're wondering what the pickups are, it's a set of Seymour Duncan whole lot of humbuckers. Of course. <laughs> Oh, 
Yeah. Oh, and by the way, if you're listening to this on headphones, the first track is hard left, the second track is hard right. So four by twelve hard left, two by twelve hard right, one by twelve straight down the middle, in the middle position on the pickup selector. Yes. <laughs> And there you have it. That, my friends, was the Cab Clone IR Plus from Mesa. It really is a great piece of equipment. For more information, go to our website, or better still, call your sales engineer, and he or she will be only too glad to guide you through all the many features I haven't covered. I'm out. See ya. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're going to comment, be nice. I'm a sensitive kind of guy. Now, for more videos like this, just click here. The people in them are much better than me and can speak properly. And last but by no means least, for your music instrument and pro audio needs, go to www.sweetwater.com. Toodlepip. <laughs>